So I think it's easy to spend much of your daily life not attending to breathing, not noticing it much. And it can seem like pretty in, inconsequential in some ways when we, if, we could, if we're able to take it for granted. And, um, and not of that much importance compared to all the important things we're thinking about and imagining and doing. And maybe we can think of the breathing as something that's very humble and they're just there to constantly support us, but maybe it doesn't want to have a lot of attention. But even so, the more we're aware of breathing and sensitive to breathing, uh, we have access to all this information about ourselves. And one of that information is how we hold the breath in check, how we, there's resistance in the breath, or, or, or we're you know, holding and not breathing in, or not exhaling properly, or breathing only partially, or parts of our body are held in tight, maybe the belly's tight, and we're most, mostly doing chest breathing. And um, all kinds of things that are maybe subtle, but subtle because they indicate the state of our minds also. Because they indicate the state of our minds, they're actually quite valuable to see and to know. And there's this reciprocal relationship that as the mind gets tense, the breathing can get tense. As the, as the body, the whole system is tense, if we relax the breathing and uh, return to the breathing, then uh, the rest of us can stop, sometimes become less tense, for example. So this uh, wonderful intimacy with breathing is so beneficial in so many ways. So in the third step of Anapanasati, the 16 steps the Buddha gave for breathing, the third step is to um, uh, uh, train oneself to become aware or train oneself to experience um, the whole body as we breathe in, the the whole body as we breathe out. And as I said yesterday, one of the meanings of this, the interpretations of this, is it means the breath body, the full scope of how much the body is participates in the experience of breathing. And, um, and uh, what's interesting about the word for body, it's uh, in Pali, it's kaya, K-A-Y-A, is that it's a kind of a, it seems to be used in a particular way it can mean body, but there are other words for the physical body as well that are more related to the physical body than the word kaya. And, uh, and the way that the word kaya is used, uh, we can make kind of a, I think, a little bit of a fun word play, if you allow me. Uh, it's easy enough to say that our body is not what we think about. The body is not what we think it is. Because whatever we think the body is, is probably limited, not really the full scope of what the body is. But uh, my interpretation of what the Buddha would say is similar to that, but one step kind of more that makes it a little bit of a paradox or irony or, or uh, 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 mind-twisting kind of statement. So the body is not what we think it is because... It is what we think it is. So there's two levels here. So it's not our surface thoughts, our ideas, our interpretation we live in, whatever the body is, the ideas we have. But the the kaya as the body is very much influenced by what we think, the attitudes we have, and the mind states that we have. And so this kaya, the breath body that uh, this, uh, that uh, we're focusing on here, is that experience we have of the body, which is malleable and shaped by how our mind operates. And there's many levels in which the, that mutuality, that interrelationship exists. And so... Um, uh, so, you know, so as I said, you know, if we get, if that mind gets tense, then the breathing gets held tight. If, um, if we uh, uh, have an attitude of, uh, all kinds of attitudes and motivations and activities that we do that are generated from the mind, that will have an influence on how we breathe. And, um, 
And so as we get, as we meditate, as the mind gets calmer, so the, the breath body becomes calmer. As the mind gets stiller and less activated by a lot of thoughts and ideas, and it gets more subtle, the breathing becomes more subtle. And it's fascinating to sit and get calm in meditation. Maybe you're very calm and very quiet. And then out of the blue, with, you know, no choice on your part, the mind suddenly thinks about a conflict that you had with someone 25 years ago. And suddenly you feel a surge of anger and um, about how you were treated or something. And now your breathing changes. Your breathing was soft, relaxed, and at ease. And suddenly the breathing gets the body, the chest, the diaphragm, the belly, everything gets tightened up. And the breathing now is limited and tight and maybe speeded up even, all kinds of things. So what happens in the mind, <clears throat> what we think, what we think does have a big influence on our, on our body and on, on our breath body. And so part of what can make this <clears throat> mindfulness of breathing so interesting and so valuable is because what we experience, the, the breathing that we experience, and the operating word is experience, the one we perceive, we're experiencing it through the filter of the mind and... and uh, and what we're experiencing is very much influenced by the state of the mind. And, uh, and so the breathing is a, <clears throat> then is a doorway, is a channel for, to the mind. And in a sense, as we're watching the breathing, we're also watching the mind with the breathing. It isn't that we're ignoring the mind <clears throat> by focusing on the physical sensations of breathing. They're not just pure physical sensations. The, what we, the breathing is so intimately connected to the state of the mind that we're actually having a window into the mind as we breathe. Now, it doesn't have to be a window where we consciously think this and start imagining, what am I seeing in the mind? <clears throat> but uh, there, there it's, it's almost like the mind and body in relationship to breathing are not that separate from each other. And so... It, as we d develop more mindfulness of breathing, more concentration of, with breathing, and um, that very concentration and mindfulness is part of the mind that begins to shift and change. And so then the, that shift and change and changes the breathing, which changes how we focus on the breathing, which changes the mind, which as the mind changes, it fo changes how we focus on breathing, how we're present for it. And so step by step, <clears throat> or spiral by spiral, there is, a, there is a deeper and deeper kind of connection to breathing. And so part of what makes the breathing so engaging for mindfulness of breathing, eventually, and very engaging, very absorbing, is uh, that can't be understood by someone who thinks the breathing is just a physical, um, you know, mecha mechanical thing, is because of this, this intimacy between mind and body and how connected they are. And as we really get absorbed in breathing, something shifts and changes in the mind and vice versa. And to have this reciprocity uh, go really deep, this intimacy and closeness and, and actually a lot of goodness, a lot of beauty, a lot of wonderfulness kind of arises from this because of this close connection between the two. So this is, I'm hoping you don't hear this and now <clears throat> strain or search or s strive to see and expect it to be just this way. And it's a mindfulness of breathing takes a tremendous amount of patience, a willingness, an allowance, a humility, an openness, <clears throat> no hurry, <clears throat> not trying to strain and not try to um, experience what I'm saying just automatically. I'm hoping that what I teach today about this connection between mind and body will um, kind of inspire you to uh, <clears throat> be more patient and more accepting and more humble and more interested in just, okay, <clears throat> okay, I'm just here. I'm here for the ride. I'm here to ride the breaths coming and going. I'm here to let the breathing reveal itself to me. I'm here to allow the Dharma 
to show itself to me in the way that the Dharma, when the Dharma is, is ready. And I'm just here <clears throat> doing my small piece, really trying to stay familiar, intimate, connected to the breathing, trusting the breathing. And so what I did in the guided meditation about um, uh, this big, um, you know, this whole breath body. Uh, some people might find that it's useful to ride the waves of expansion and contraction. And some people might find it um, that it just helps them become more familiar with the territory of breathing. And they might still remain uh, rooted in their home base if they have one. Uh, the, the belly, the chest, the nostrils or something. And then in the course of today, as you go about your day, next 24 hours, become, continue being a student of your breathing in daily life. Notice all the shifts and changes that happen to your breathing, depending the activities you're doing, the conversations you're having, the emotions you have. Become more and more curious and um, figure out some way to have a regular check-in with yourself through the day. Maybe have a timer go off regularly it's, oh, now my breathing is like this. Now it's like this. So um, more and more familiarity with breathing. Make it a habit. So thank you for today and a happy breathing to all of you. <laughs>